If you have symptoms of coronavirus, like a new cough, a new temperature, or a loss of sense of smell and taste, then it's really important you do not do this type of coronavirus test. This is the wrong one. However, we're gonna tell you exactly what the various different tests do, how to do this test properly, and when you should be doing this to make sure you keep you and your family safe. Shall we begin? When it comes to checking for coronavirus, there are three types of tests that you need to be aware of. And particularly with more people having access to the lateral flow test that we'll talk about shortly, it's important that you know that you're doing the test for the right reason at the right time and make sure giving you the most accurate result to keep you and your family safe. So what are the three different tests? So the first type of test for coronavirus is the PCR test. This is where a nasal and or throat swab is taken, and then this is sent off to a lab to be processed to check for the messenger RNA, the stuff that makes the virus replicate, and to see if you have an active coronavirus infection. This is the best test to do if you have symptoms, because it can confirm whether you are actively having an infection or not. The results can take at least six hours to be processed and it may take a little bit longer before you actually get the result direct to yourself. The PCR test is really specific and sensitive and therefore the best way for us to check if you have coronavirus. It is also the recommended test that you have if you have symptoms. That is different to what's called the lateral flow test. The lateral flow test is the test that many of you have probably had access to or seen, which you can do in your own home and can give you a result in about 30 minutes. It looks like a pregnancy test, and we're going to have a look at it shortly. The lateral flow test check for the protein of the virus itself. The important thing to know about the lateral flow test is this should only be done if you do not have symptoms of coronavirus. So if you do not have a new cough, if you do not have a temperature, and if you do not have a loss of sense of smell and taste, then you can do the lateral flow test and it can be accurate. If you have any of those, you need to be arranging a PCR test. Additionally, if a lateral flow test does become positive, you will then need to arrange a PCR test afterwards. The final type of test is called the antibody test. This is normally a blood sample test that then checks for the actual antibodies to coronavirus. And this normally won't happen until a couple of weeks after you've had a potential infection episode. We're still not sure how long the antibodies actually stay in your system. So it's not a really good marker to know when you've actually had contact with the coronavirus infection, but it can be a marker of you having potential immunity. Although it's important to remember that there are different antibodies that may be picked up for various different reasons, for example, the different vaccines that exist. As more people have access to the lateral flow test, it's really important that you know how to take an appropriate sample to check that you're doing this for the right reasons and they're getting the right result at the right time. So I'm gonna show you how to do a lateral flow test. These do come in various different sizes and types, and one of the more common ones is the Inov IVD test kit, which is the one that I'll be using today. In that test kit, you'll get several pieces of equipment. This does include the instructions, which are always worth having a look at, an extraction or buffer solution. This is really important, so do not lose this and do not spill this. It's really easy to do, I'm afraid. You'll also get several versions of the test kit itself that kind of look like this. However, they do look slightly differently when you've opened them. We'll do that shortly. You should also have several swabs that come in packaged material looking like this, and they'll have a plastic end and a fabric end this is the part that's gonna go up your nose and the back of your throat. Finally, you should have a little plastic tube and a cap that kind of look like this. I've already put them together. It's important to note they may come separately and some of them may even have little lids on them as well. That's all the equipment you get with the testing kit. There are, however, additional pieces of equipment you are gonna to need to do this testing sample. Firstly, you're gonna need a tissue. You're also gonna to need to be able to have an area where you can wash your hands and a clean surface for you to do the test on. Additionally, I'd recommend having something that you can hold the plastic tube with. This is because this needs to contain the liquid that you're going to use and you need to keep upright so you don't spill it. I've seen various different things that people have used. Clothes pegs work really well. Alternately, you can use containers or even 3D print something yourself if you wanted to. For the purpose of this demonstration though, I'm going to be using a simple sample pot that's clean and empty. Finally, to report the results, make sure you've got something to report them on. Ideally, this needs to be done on the central website. And the easiest way to do this is to register with the NHS app to have the NHS sign in because it makes the process so much easier. If you don't have an NHS ID, watch this video that shows you how you can register for the NHS app and get one. 
So now you're ready to do your lateral flow test. Before you get started, it's really important that you do a couple of things. So firstly, make sure you've got a nice clean area that's been wiped down for you to do the sample on. Then take a tissue and I'd like you to blow your nose and cough three times. <coughs> Throw that away. Now go wash your hands. Take the sample tube and remove the cap and make sure you put it in somewhere that remains upright. Next, remove the lid from the extraction solution and get that ready. Take the sample tube and place six drops into the tube from the extraction solution. Two, three, four, five, six. There we go. As I said, this now needs to stay upright, so make sure you've got a container or something to hold it for you. And remember to put the cap back on the extraction solution. You do not want to lose this stuff. Next, take the test packet, check it's in date, and if that's the case, open it up by tearing at the end. So I'm going to give you a closer look of the sample kit right now. In order to do that, I'm just going to have to zoom in, so let's do that right now. And as you can see, there's different parts you need to be aware of. There is the sample well right here. This is where you're going to be placing the solution once you've done it. Additionally, you'll see a flow of fluid that goes up as the sample processes, and that will cross over to the C and T area. So C stands for control, and T stands for test. These are the two lines that you'll be looking for. Also here is the barcode that you need to record when you're documenting your results, either doing that on paper or preferably on the online portal or through the NHS app. Place the sample kit on a flat area so you can then do the sample. Next, take your swab and open it from the plastic end. Do not open it from the fabric end. So now I'm going to open the swab. Holding it at the end, pull it out. And as you can see, there's that fabric little end. I'm afraid that's going to be going into your nose and into the back of your throat shortly. Do check your instructions in your lateral flow kit. Some will ask you to take a sample from the back of your throat. Some will ask you to take a sample from your nose. Some will ask you to do both. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to take a sample from both. First, take a sample from the back of your throat. In order to do this, you are going to need to open wide, and the aim is to brush the fabric end of the swab against the back of your throat where your tonsils are. Let's give this a go, shall we? Unfortunately, it is going to feel a bit weird, and it may make you gag. Don't worry about that. Make sure you try and brush it against both sides at the back of your throat. Next, you need to place the swab into the nose area. It's important to place it into each nostril and rotate it five times inside. You should feel a bit of pressure as you're pushing upwards, but you should not feel pain. Let's do it, shall we? Now place the swab in the solution in the sample tube and mix for 10 seconds. When you've done that, you need to make sure you get all the solution off the fabric end. So as you withdraw the swab, gently pull and pinch the tube to squeeze off all the remaining fluid. And withdraw. Then make sure you dispose of this in the bin. Place the dropper lid back onto the sample pot and then place two drops into the sample area of the test kit. Two. It's important to keep the remaining solution just in case if you need to repeat the test, and unfortunately you won't know that for another half an hour, so keep this safe until you've got the result. Next, start a timer for 30 minutes, and then come back and check the result after that. After half an hour, then it's time to read the results. And it's important to know there are four types of possible outcomes for this test. So the first outcome is that there are no lines at all. If that's the case, unfortunately the test has failed and you will need to repeat it again using the remaining solution that you have. 
The next type of result is that you have a negative test, which means you do not have coronavirus, and that will be when you've got just the C line. Let's have a look, a closer look here. So that is where you've just got the control line showing up, and that means that you have a negative coronavirus lateral flow test. The other possibility is that you just have a T line there and no C line. That means that the control sample hasn't worked and the test is not accurate and you will need to repeat it again. However, if you have both lines there, and that means you've got both the control and the test line, then it means that the test is accurate and that you might have coronavirus. If you have both lines, you will need to organize a PCR test by contacting either 119 or going on the website to book a PCR test to get an accurate result. Additionally, you will need to isolate at home until you've had that test result done as per the national guidance. Additionally, any members of your household will also need to isolate. It's also important that you record the results appropriately. For many people, absolutely keep a paper record and mark down that lovely code on the sample. Additionally, it's important you register this on the online portal and the best and easiest way to do that is using the NHS app because it saves you having to ask loads of additional questions over and over again. It's a real time saver. Definitely recommend doing so. And if you want to do that, have a look at this video right here that shows you how to register with the NHS app. Alternately, YouTube's gonna be recommending another video for you right here. And as always, EGP Lane is here to help save you and your patient's time by taking hands in your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.